All right, I want to take a look at this new application here I've been waiting on for a while. You can see I've got the GitHub page pulled up. Uh, you can see a little of the about, the browser-based mapping tool to tie Kismet, Sparrow Wi-Fi, and other RF-related data sources into one interface. So this is kind of what I was looking for with tying things together in DragonOS, and this is a great beginning uh, to do this. You can see this is a beta right now. And there's a lot going to go on here in this video. I'm going to try and do the best I can to bring it all together uh, where anybody can get it uh, uh, set up. So, okay, bear with me. There's a lot we got to do. And we'll probably, I have a Raspberry Pi. I have Dragon OS here running in the background. We'll full screen this here in a second once we get things up and going. And we might be able to tie the Kismet Wi Fi. I'm also getting some remote ADSB that's going to be uh, coming in and so we'll just tie this all together. First things first though, let's clone down this application here. I'm just doing it right in my home directory for right now. And we'll change into there. We're going to need to look at the HTML folder and we'll edit the index.html and I'll explain why here in a second, but um, we're going to change the script in the link here to only start with cesium because cesium is already installed in DragonOS. And so if we do a sim link to user source cesium and we put a cesium sim link right here in the directory, everything should work. We'll want to start up the web server part of this application using Python 3. We'll pull open 127.0.0.1 port 8000 and uh, something I need to do, I'll update cesium to the latest so you won't get a blank map but uh, for right now you need to open it up and pick uh, something that does not require a, a cesium token which in this case I'll just pick world imagery so now we have our familiar cesium, uh, cesium interface but uh, what is new and unique is we have these tie-ins to Kismet Sparrow uh, a file upload a tie-in to the splat slash signal server application that's current currently in DragonOS all right, so we need to pull open, let's see, we'll, we'll go ahead and maximize this, uh, but we're going to pull open another terminal window here. And so we need to set up Kismet. So we'll use uh, sudo nano or whatever your favorite editor is. And we'll edit the Kismet comp file because I'm not going to run uh, interfaces directly on this laptop for Kismet just for the purposes of the video recording here and needing GPS and all that stuff. So we're going to have some remote information coming in that will have GPS with it, ADSB, and this, uh, and, and uh, at least for one. And if I get to Wi-Fi, we'll set a static GPS location. But need to change this to remote capture list, and this is not the most secure setting. I'm just doing it for here so that any thing that's coming in to the IP address of this Kismet server that we're about to spin up can make it in to the Kismet server. Now I've already done port forwarding and all that stuff so that's not really covered in this video. We're also going to need to change the Kismet HTTPD file and we'll come down we're looking for where the core setting is. Went a little too far. So We'll uncomment this line, make it true. I've already edited this line here and I'll explain uh, what I had to change, but uh, what you need to have on the right hand side here is the URL and the, or the IP address or the URL and the port number of the mapping tool because that is what's going to be um, coming over to the Kismet server to pull information. So that's what this uh, URL and port number is meant for. So let's save this. 
we'll change back into our home directory and we'll start kismet the command line here and we'll go to localhost 2501 we'll let kismet start up um, and the first time we need to create a username and password and this will get saved in your home uh, folder in a hidden dot kismet folder that you can change later if needed and so this will get kismet up and going and while I wait for uh, to get set back up with ADSB we can So while I wait to, all right, so, okay, I've got ADSB up and going here that's remotely coming in. I'll also try to come over here to a Raspberry Pi. And let me think here. So trying to remember this it might take me a second here. We'll feed in well I might have to cut out the part where the uh, wireless is coming in but we'll show it on the map so you can get an idea of what it looks like so uh, just know that everything that's coming into Kismet that has a GPS location the goal is it will be mapped out on here which you can see uh, some of my settings uh, must have still been saved so we're already getting information from Kismet but if you didn't have this set up then you would pull out your Kismet tab here put in the URL of the Kismet server which is in this tab here put in your username and password say password you'd uh, pick however many uh, seconds back of information you want to see and then you'd click update Kismet info and so right now it's only ADSB but give me a second here and we'll do a remote Kismet capture of Wi-Fi using the internal uh, actually I'm gonna have to plug in a alpha card to the Raspberry Pi see what that settings we also need to do the source we need to do dash dash TCP and we'll try dash, dash fixed GPS and we'll t just see if I can make something up here um, format might and see what we got here Okay. All right.
right, so uh, I do have my uh, Wi-Fi coming in now, and so I had to I'll cut that part out, and we'll see if we get we get anything here. So we got our aircraft. We can go 3D with this. Oh, actually, I just thought about that. The GPS location on the devices. I should have got a Latin long. Let's see. We'll try this here. Let's see. Close this out. Well, now it's going over to where the wireless devices <laughs> are, which you're not going to really be able to see anything uh, now uh, because it's just stationary, and what it does is all the devices they'll kind of stack on top of one another. So that's just showing like how many wireless devices are right there but what you would do is you'd move around and then you'd get all your points where your wireless access uh, points are at your wire or your bluetooth uh, rtl433 and everything else that kismet uh, can uh, associate to gps would be in here and if you were running the kismet surfer itself with gps you wouldn't have to do the uh, remote thing that I'm doing now. So over here in the Kismet tab, I've got all the wireless devices coming in and then the ADSB. So let's go back to ADSB and just know that uh, uh, Sparrow, Sparrow Wi-Fi, that's also built into Dragon OS, but it's not configurable yet here. And that, uh, so I'll probably cover that later. So now we have our cesium. We've got our uh, aircraft here from coming from Kismet, our wireless devices, which you know the GPS location is somewhere else that I put otherwise they'd be all here in this one panel the other thing too that is uh, running in here is the splat so if we come in here uh, and you need to it'll be grayed out at first you need to actually type in the URL uh, of where the splat server is which on Dragon OS if you recall if we do a a startup of Apache 2 and we look in our var www html there's a splat folder with all the current code which actually is running signal server on port or not port but 127.0.0.1 slash splat so what this interface currently can do is connect to the splat server by sending over uh, information whether you um, click on the map, um, drop a point, it'll fill this out for you, and then you can put in uh, like a call sign here and uh, a height above ground, and what will happen is this information, uh, as long as you have it set up right and running, should get submitted over to the Splat server, so if we search the database we can see we have a YouTube Thing here now but I'm not going to be able to do the plot on this because I don't have elevation data there so what we'll do is we'll take a look at uh, test 3 which uh, is in a location that does have elevation data and so if I leave the default settings and I've shown this before in a video this is all going to be up, uh, updated uh, with something else here soon but if we create a plot which behind the scenes is using signal server it'll create this KMZ file that will download then we can come over here and go to our file upload section and browse, find that KMZ file, and load that onto the map. Now it might take a second to load. Okay, so now we have our 
file is uh, uploaded and it's being rendered onto the same map uh, that has the ADSB devices and the wireless devices and so on and so forth. You can mess with the opacity and close this out. We can look at this 3D and if we had this the uh, cesium key on here we can um, get a little better map data. Let's see. we can kind of see through that KMZ and if we let that map load a little longer and then we can see our DB and what these colors mean by default here and so that kind of ties together a lot of different things there and I didn't even get around to showing Sparrow yet but um, we'll do that uh, probably in a later video. So uh, hopefully that does this justice. I think there's a lot of um, power in this application of combining all these different things. Uh, it's all open source. And so uh, I think I'll stop there for now and then we'll come back and uh, once I get around to doing Sparrow and then we'll we'll take a look at that. All right. Thank you.